Hello again, everybody. Welcome to our question of the day for January 10th, 2026. All right, we got a two-year-old girl brought to the ED by her grandfather due to abdominal pain and lethargy. The grandfather says that the girl was her playful self until yesterday, but 24 hours ago began developing bouts of abdominal pain that would last several minutes and then remit. He says, I've never seen anything like this. She doubles over and she won't eat or drink. I didn't want to give her anything for it until I know what's going on. Do you think it could be your appendix? Since yesterday, she has had fewer wet diapers and has been refusing to eat or drink since this morning. She's had no significant, she has no significant past medical or surgical history. She's on no medications. Vaccines are up to date. Vitals show blood pressure 82 over 47, heart rate 128, respiration is 24, temperature 98.6. The child is sleepy but arousable. Abdominal exam reveals hypoactive bowel sounds and diffuse mild discomfort to palpation. There is scant blood in the diaper. Abdominal x-ray reveals dilated loops of small bowel and no free air. IV fluids are started. Which of the following is the best next step in the management of this patient? A, abdominal CT with contrast. B, barium enema. C, air enema. D, upper GI series. Or E, immediate surgical intervention. All right, so I'll give you a chance to pause here to take a look at this question, and we will move on. So the answer is air enema. Okay, so here we have a girl. She is two years old, and she has bouts of abdominal pain that last several minutes and then remit. What is that called when you have a pain that comes and goes, Okay, especially in the abdominal area? That is called colicky pain. And colicky pain usually indicates that there is an obstruction in a tube, somewhere that's pushing things forward. So that could be a stone in the ureter, or it could be a, a bowel blockage, uh, or it could be something like this, into susception, which essentially is a blockage. And this is different from the pain you would get with a perforation or with ischemia, where that pain is constant. So we also find that there is blood in the diaper and she has essentially food and water fear. She doesn't want to eat or drink and that's because that causes uh, the, uh, the, the bowels to move. Okay, it causes peristalsis and peristalsis is what's causing the pain. So she knows this and she's associating putting anything into her mouth with the pain and that's why she stopped. And so naturally there are fewer wet diapers because she's dehydrated, she's mildly hypotensive, mildly tachycardic. And so what we see here is a picture that looks just like intussusception. However, we're not done, okay? You need to get an x-ray. Why do you need to get an x-ray? Because you need to know whether or not there is, uh, if, if there's ischemia, necrosis, and perforation. Perforation being the most important because that will alter management. If there's perforation, we go in straight for surgery. If not, we do an air enema. Okay, so that immediately gets rid of E. So we have intussusception. Intussusception is a condition that belongs primarily to infants and toddlers. And at its very simplest, intussusception occurs when a segment of intestine telescopes into the segment immediately distal to it. Kind of think of it like if you were to take a sock and take the, the bottom of the sock and push it inward, like you're pu pushing it inside out. That's basically what intussusception is. And what happens then is it drags a segment uh, of the mesentery along with it, and then venous and lymphatic drainage is compromised. You get edema, which we see on ultrasound, which is the best imaging test, by the way, uh, to confirm intussusception. X-ray won't do that. It'll just show us if there's perforation. And so if that process continues unchecked, arter arterial flow will be threatened. And so what began as an obstruction will then progress, as we said, towards ischemia, necrosis, and perforation, which is always a risk when you cut off blood flow to the bowel. And this arc can unfold over hours. So that's why recognition matters. Uh, clinical, you need to have a, a good clinical suspicion. Get your x-ray. Anytime you have a, a child with colicky abdominal pain, uh, if they haven't, if they're not voiding, they're not stooling, things like that, you definitely need to get an x-ray because we're concerned about perforation.
All right, so you get this classic triad, the severe colicky abdominal pain. Sometimes you get a sausage-shaped mass in the right abdomen and then current jelly stools. Now that won't be told to you on your exam because that's a buzzword. So look for maybe rectal bleeding or occult blood positive or something along those lines. Only about 15% have that classic triad where they're getting the uh, colicky abdominal pain, you'll always have that, the sausage-shaped mass and the current jelly stools. And then the lethargy and altered mental status can be due either to sepsis if they have a perforation or it could be due to just good old hydration or dehydration rather. Now, if you want to confirm this, then you need to get an ultrasound, okay? Do you have to? No, but we almost always do. X-ray will not tell us the diagnosis. You need to get an ultrasound. And then the management, if they don't have signs of peritonitis, they're stable, get uh, an air enema. Uh, if an air enema is what we prefer, by the way. If they do have signs of peritonitis, then you need to intervene surgically. One more thing I want to point out here with intussusception, remember the rotavirus vaccine. That can be associated with intussusception. Okay, and keep in mind also, this is a disorder that primarily affects toddlers. All right, so why is A wrong? Abdominal CT with contrast. Would that be able to diagnose into susception? Yes, but uh, ultrasound is preferred because of its high sensitivity and lack of radiation. So if you were to do imaging here to confirm into susception, and you often will, you should go with abdominal ultrasound. Barium enema? Usually avoided with suspected intussusception because there's a risk of spilling that barium out and can cause a chemical peritonitis and electrolyte abnormalities. Upper GI series. So we would do this if we suspected malrotation and or volvulus. And that would be, how would that be different? That would be severe abdominal pain that is constant because this pain comes from ischemia. That is a key distinction. It's not colicky, it's constant when you have uh, a volvulus because a volvulus is going to cause ischemia. That's a key distinction. So the answer is C. Remember, again, when you suspect intussusception, you need to get an abdominal x-ray and we're not, it's not to diagnose it, it's just to rule out perforation. That's important. Okay, so this is the donut sign or the target sign, which you would see if you were able to appreciate a mass. And you should always uh, aim for uh, the, um, I mean, do the entire abdomen, uh, the point where it, it hurts the worst, or if you are able to feel a mass, that's where you want to, uh, that's where you want to do an ultrasound. And it's fairly simple uh, to, to identify. I don't think you'll be asked about this on your exam, but they may tell you um, it's, uh, there's a target, um, a, a target uh, appearance on ultrasound. That may be uh, how they put it forward to you. Okay, so here is our, our um, recap of everything we talked about. And uh, if you like this video, definitely feel free to hit the like button and subscribe, and I will see you tomorrow. Have a great day.